Hey folks, how's it going? So uh, welcome to day one of the five day marketing challenge. I can't believe I haven't done a marketing challenge before. Um, so it's quite exciting. I'm excited, I hope you are too. Um, so I'm gonna kick things off just by doing a little uh, marketing 101 because it's quite important that we kind of get the marketing sort of basics nailed. Uh, so here we go. So slightly different format to normal. So um, I'm gonna do a couple of little presentations and screen shares and things like that. This is just to mix it up a little bit. So bear with me. So marketing 101, here we go. So first step, identify your target market. Uh, it kind of goes without saying that if we don't know who we're here to serve, um, then we can't actually serve anybody particularly well. So we have to work out exactly who our target market is and then um, work out where they hang out. Uh, so a good example of this might be that, um, uh, uh, say for example, well, I was watching a, um, a program uh, on B the BBC called Who Wants to Marry a Millionaire? I, I say I was. Uh, obviously, my wife was watching it and I got roped into it. Um, but uh, five of the women were chatting and uh, four of them had big engagement rings on their hands and then the, the, the fifth one didn't. And they kind of started talking to her and they said, well, you know, why haven't you met your millionaire yet? We've all met millionaires. What are, what are you doing? And she said, well, you know, I, I don't really know. And they said, well, are you going out? And she said, well, no, not really. And they said, well, maybe you should start going out. And actually, there's some really exclusive um, sort of clubs in Mayfair and Chelsea where millionaires go and hang out, and they pay lots of membership fees. So identify the target market. Those are millionaires. Where do they hang out? In exclusive clubs in Chelsea and Mayfair and places like that. So none of this stuff is rocket science. It's quite um, uh, basic stuff. Uh, so then what we've got to do is we've got to go to them. So basically, we make it easy for them to find us. Uh, and we do that by hanging out in the places where they're more likely to ha to hang out. Now we don't do this in kind of like a stalkery sort of fashion. We do this in a in a we just show up basically regularly and often with the same consistent message in the same places where they hang out, where our clients hang out, our ideal target market. So for example, if we design websites for small businesses, where are small businesses most likely to hang out? Well, more than likely it's going to be on Facebook groups or on LinkedIn or on Twitter or places like that. So if we're showing up there with the same consistent message, giving tips about websites and things like that, then potentially we're gonna start getting people, peaking people's interest. And if we're giving away value up front, when we show up regularly and often with that same consistent message, then we're more likely to get clients on board. So um, the next thing I wanna kind of work on, so just to kind of complete that, actually I'm gonna go back a slide. So um, just to kind of complete that scenario, so identify target market, millionaires, where do they hang out, exclusive clubs, go to those exclusive clubs, and then finally show up regularly and often with the same consistent message, hey, I'm a really nice person, so uh, why don't we uh, go out on a date? <clears throat> it's not rocket science. So identify a target market, so small business owners, uh, where do they hang out, uh, let's say uh, Facebook groups, networking um, meetings and places like that. We've got to make sure that we go to those networking meetings and that we go to those Facebook groups and then we actually turn up there with um, some kind of message of value regularly and often and consistently and we will find clients that way. Um, there's another thing which I talk about in terms of goals and activity and stuff like that. I'll save that for another day. If you want to know more, uh, come and grab me. So next up, what does that message need to be? And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see entrepreneurs making. So in this instance, uh, what I mean by this is the, me the message. When we go to our clients, they say, well, I'm looking for a website designer. We start going, oh, well, I'm the best web designer. We build standard compliant websites which are very well optimized and Google will love them. Um, actually, that's not necessarily what the client um, either probably wants but it may be what they need. So what we've got to do is um, uh, look at what our marketing message looks like. So I always talk about three core pillars in business. So delivery, sales, and marketing. So remember marketing leads to sales conversations, which leads to the work which puts food on the table. Um, but there's an old saying which, used to, uh, which is um, still used, which is sell people what they need, not what they want. Now I actually believe the saying is kind of half right. Actually what we need to do is market to what people want and then sell them what they need. So in this example, 
uh, talking about websites, rather than talking about the great features of a st having a standard compliant website, actually the reason why people generally want a good website is because they want to generate more leads, which is gonna generate more business for them and ultimately lead to more sales and more money. So what we say is, we build highly effective webs, um, we build websites which are highly effect effective at converting leads prospects into leads and I got that completely wrong so I'm going to say it again so we build awesome websites which are highly effective at converting prospects into leads because that's what people want people want leads they want sales conversations they want money and then when we sit them down once we pique their interest they go oh cool well nobody else is um, saying that they can do that so I'm interested when they sit down they'll say well how do you do that and that's the point when you now have the opportunity during a face-to-face -face sales meeting of saying well um, how we do that is through um, uh, working out uh, who your target market is. We'll, we'll add on Google Analytics. We'll make sure the website search engine compl um, search engine optimized, uh, standard compliant, etc., etc., etc. So we can go into the technical side of it, but we don't put that in our marketing message. People don't want to know what the features are of your um, of of your products. They want to know. Here we go what the outcome is gonna be. So what I want you to do um, for, for the exercise for day one of the marketing, five day marketing challenge, is first of all to write down 10 features of your products. Now, I, now I've said it, I've said it, don't market the features, market the outcome, but we're gonna come on to that in a second. But in order to know the difference between the two, I want you to write down a feature set of your products just 10, 10 features of your product. The next thing I want you to do is to write down, t not one, but 10 outcomes that your products will deliver. And then I want you to compare the two and see what differences there are between the two of them. Because guaranteed there will be an awful lot of differences. There's a couple of other elements to, um, to marketing which I want to cover. So the first one is around market research. So again, there are there's several stages to market research. And how I discovered this, I was delivering a talk at um, uh, the uh, the local university to about 120 business students, and they came up with some fantastic ideas. And I said, cool, well now what we've got to do is take these ideas to market. So if you're in a position whereby you don't understand, either maybe you're just a startup, or maybe you haven't actually, uh, maybe you've launched your product, but it's not quite landing, the mess marketing message isn't quite landing. Um, we've got to do this thing called market research. So the first step of market research basically is to um, assess whether there's a need for your product. So uh, in the example um, which one of the students used, he'd created this great product which um, effectively was like an app which could look inside your mouth and, and tell you whether you cleaned your teeth properly or not, which I thought was actually really bloody cool. So, um, so I asked 120 students, who's interested? And about 80 people put their hand up. Cool, stage one passed because we can assess that there's a need for this product. The second thing is, and there are three steps to this, the second step is then we ask people how much they're willing to pay. So there might be a need, but if people aren't willing to pay for that product, then there's no business need for this product. So I started the Dutch auction, I started at five pounds, 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, and I got to 50 pounds, and there was about 20 people with their, at the original 80, with their hands still left up. So I was like, cool. So there's actually a thousand pounds worth of business in here. I double checked with the guy, how much does it cost to make? And he said, well, about 10 pounds. So there's a good profit margin in it to cover things like marketing, branding, and the website, and overheads and stuff and stuff like that. So cool, so step two, we've just passed. Step two of market research, we've just passed because there's a need for it and people will pay some money for it. And then I said, and this is the really important part of it, and this is all around the value proposition, the outcome that your product delivers. So I said, now what we've got to do is start to mix in stories and make it a bit more sensationalist. And I'm gonna talk more about this on, um, on day three of this challenge. So I said, right now, um, if you don't buy this product, in the next 30 days, one of your teeth is gonna fall out. How many people now are gonna buy this product? How many people, um, and more hands went up, and I said, cool, how much money would people be willing to spend? And I said, I'm gonna start higher. And I started at 500 pounds, and I went up incrementally, and there was actually 10 people now who would spend 2,000 pounds on this one particular product. So now we've grown and scaled that product, um, or the potential of that product, from 1,000 pounds with, with 20 clients, 
up to £20,000 with just 10 clients. So actually we could have a cheaper product, we could have a medium quality product, and we could have a high-end um, product. So there's a whole suite of different things there. But the thing was the sensationalist, the story which sits behind the marketing message, message the fact it was sensationalist, and we were starting to market to the outcomes of what people wanted to hear. If it was just simply the features, oh, there's this thing, this mirror which you can look in your mouth, and it's connected to an app, and blah, blah, blah. But people don't want that. They're just like, what's it going to do? So think about that when you're putting your marketing message together. Remember, features versus outcomes. What is it that your product does? What are you going to deliver? Um, so uh, if you're in Fearless, go and grab the worksheet. If you want to know more about the Fearless program, obviously, uh, well, it doesn't matter. It's regardless, irrespective. So what I want you to do is um, make your list of features and outcomes. Uh, pop them into the comments box below this video. And then I'll come back to you with um, some feedback if you've got any questions at all. And uh, I will see you for day number two of the five-day marketing challenge.